So welcome to week three of Accelerator. So how to accelerate your business, profit and income, even in uncertain economic and sociological times. Let's talk about the power of language. So, so language is really powerful. If you, if you look into uh, like, you know, uh, people who believe in a particular religious scripture and stuff like that, for them, that particular word, that sentence, is so powerful for them. And many people, you know, believe uh, in, in some, some level of spiritual scriptures. Uh, and because of that, they, they, when they read that particular book, whatever that book is, it's whether it is called uh, Bible or Quran or Gita or whatever else, um, like the word, they call it the word of God sometimes, right? They, or they call it the word, like, and the word has power. The word, one you, once you're aligned, the words that comes out of your head or of your mouth has so much power. It's so much powerful because once you're aligned, you are aligned with creator. Once you're aligned with creator, the words that are you know, spoken has enormous power. But oftentimes we don't recognize that. For example, if, if somebody is saying that my life is uh, ruined and that becomes their curse, it's a curse language, right? So it's a curse language. I'm not going to go deeper into it. This is just to add some frame and in the future I could I would love to get deeper into this but think about it my life is ruined is uh, is a phrase that the mind is saying soul cannot say that soul will always be optimistic the heart will always be optimistic the gut will always be optimistic but the limbic system the the emotional side is the one who's saying I felt this deep traumatic experience my life is ruined versus my my life is liberated it's a completely different emotion. It's a completely different language, right? And that language becomes a metaphor. Like imagine the words and the sounds that we are using becomes a metaphor inside of our head to create a curse story in our brain. So that's the power of the language. So I'm going to be really brief about that. But in order for us to, to accelerate and elevate our own emotions, accelerate and elevate our own business, we use something called declaration. Declaration is very simple. Declaration is, uh, is basically uh, we, uh, something that you're saying with a lot of certainty using your body and your mind and your soul and all part of your brain. That's a declaration. So let me give you an example. So in this case, since we are going through an online uh, business program, in, in, a, in this case, since all of us are business leaders, you could say something like, I'm a business leader. I lead, not follow. And you could add this to your power ceremony. This could be another improvement to your power ceremony. I'm a business leader. I lead, not follow. And when you, when you keep repeating that after some time, especially when you're involved in body, it becomes, it becomes your symbol, uh, a metaphorical symbol in your, inside, deeper inside, your, in, inside of your subconscious. I innovate, not stagnate. Another thing is we are going to have a long, I mean, it's reasonably long winter uh, in business season for, for now. It's coming, it's coming and it's happening. But what if winter is your season? You're not looking for summer where you get a lot of, lot of opportunities, but winter is like, you know, there are not a lot of opportunities, but there are a lot of opportunities, people who are innovative. So winter is my season, right? So, and feel when I'm saying this, if, see if you feel that, deeply in my in, in my conversation like a, a sense of congruence in my conversation i'm a business leader i lead not follow and say it with me in your mind i'm a business leader i lead not follow and if you're a thought leader you could say i'm a thought leader i lead not follow okay something like that so i'm a business leader i lead not follow say it with me in your mind I am a business leader. I lead, not follow. And these words have so much power because that's why we aligned ourselves. Once we align ourselves, then these words are words of power. And I innovate, not stagnate. I innovate, not stagnate. I innovate, not stagnate. So repeat that in your mind. I innovate, not stagnate. Winter is my season. Winter is my season. And even if winter is not your season, when you say this, even in winter, you will start looking for opportunities, right? Winter is your season. It's a shocking thing about marketing. So we are going to understand your customer. Like who, who's your customer? What is this person living by? What is important for this person? And then how to 
get their attention and attract them into our business. And most of our work is done. If you understand this clearly, most of your work is done there, right there, and that's it, right? Understand your customer, understand what their pains are, and understand what their needs are in a much deeper level than anybody else understand. And you will understand what I mean by that in a second. But here's the shocking thing about marketing. A lot of people think that marketing is scamming people. The word marketing, because of so many, so many people who uh, abuse the, use the word marketing to do their own gimmicks, it's understood as scamming people. How many of you have some sort of negative association with marketing? Like, do you have some sort of negative association with marketing? If so, if so put that in the chat. Yeah. So here's a prime question for today. How can I deeply listen to my customers' inner conversations? How can I deeply listen to my customers' inner conversations and become a world-class marketer starting this week? Starting this week. You don't need to become, you don't need to get an MBA from Harvard on marketing to become a world-class marketer. You could actually start being this week because I'm going to show you, you already are a world-class marketer. And once you understand that, it's a completely different level. So here's all model number 14. Marketing is strategic empathy. What do I mean by that? Marketing is deeply empathizing with another person in a strategic level. Like you don't empathize with human beings all over the planet, mostly for the most part, unless you're Mother Teresa or Gandhi. You are strategically empathizing for a group of people who have a specific problem. And that's what marketing is. And I'll be happy to, this is a distinction that we, we are bringing into this world. This is a new way of thinking that we are bringing into the business world. And second thing is, people don't buy products. This is more common than, uh, than the other one. People don't buy products. They buy results, benefits, and solutions. People don't buy products. They don't flipping care about our products. They just buy results, benefits, and solutions. This is another one. Niches are not a group of people. So people say, oh, this is my niche. My niche is like women between age of 35 and 55 who are, um, who are going through a hormone imbalance. That's not a niche. People going through hormone imbalance is a niche. And in that niche, you could target just women. That's fine. But niches are needs. Niches are needs. I want you to embed this in your head. Oftentimes, what's your niche? Oh, these are men between age of 45 to 55. That's not a niche. That's a group of people. Niches, the actual word niche or niche, if some people pronounce it that way, came from a hole, a hole that you could fill. It's not a group of people as a whole. It's a problem as a whole that you could close. Imagine there is a, there is a hole in, in the wall that wherever you are and you're filling it with something. That's what, that's what we are doing. We are filling a need inside of a customer head. So marketing is triggering action. I'm, I'm going to give you a different angle look into marketing. It's triggering action. The purpose of marketing is not to brand you. It is to get people to take action when it comes to your world. When you, when you grow to $100 million or more, we have a different strategy. But for now, at this level, purpose of marketing is to get people to take action. In marketing, everything is a test. Remember, 80% of the things in business don't go the way you wanted it to go. Only 20% go in the direction that you want to go. So if something, you did something for marketing and it doesn't work, it is not a failure. It could, it could be an educator. So every marketing strategy is test that you can measure from. Third thing, find customers where they are, not where you want them, and don't expect them to find you. And why is learning marketing so important? It is so important because the big distinct, I'm going to explain a big distinction in this. Most businesses fail because of six reasons. And, and if you want to add another major one, please let me know. This is what I have seen. One is the major challenge is marketing. How do you get leads? Businesses need leads. Second one is sales. How do you convert leads into sales? Third one, low quality product, lack of innovation, customer experience. Problem number four is, Staff management, productivity issues, which we are, we kind of started discussing the productivity side. 
very little margin cash flow problems huge debt this is another thing like they don't have a, they have a margin issue probably that is why they have cash flow problem right that or probably that is why they have huge debt and the next one is psychology of the owner the fear of failure rejection the shadows the identity the confusion we covered that part already most businesses fail most business failures are marketing and sales sales failures especially on the small business world i typically don't hear people say oh i have a lot of people coming into my business a lot of people want to work with me but i suck and the business you know didn't succeed it doesn't happen often there it's very rare once you master marketing and sales you almost mastered business and and there is a there is something that i wanted to address here on how to double your productivity in 24 hours i said you must work only on things that you're passionate and proficient at here's an exception even if you are not proficient at marketing you need to work on it you need to study that even if you suck at innovation you need to study that the third thing is even if you are not really good at optimization eventually you need to study that if you if you have reached a point you are you have multiple million dollars then optimization becomes even more important but this is just like personal development so personal development is comes to this bracket too for example learning about yourself and learning about business so even if you are not proficient i cannot say that oh i am not proficient in reading right i'm illiterate and you know what i'll just focus on what i'm passionate about and i'm proficient at which i'm not proficient in reading uh, reading books i'm illiterate then i i I, don't, i cannot i don't have an option not to read do you understand what i mean i have to get knowledge some way so there are some must things that you need to get proficient at in business especially if you are if you are between if you're starting a business to uh, you know less than 10 million dollars in that point learning to market yourself is an important thing because if marketing marketing team or the company sucks you should be able to tell them hey guys this is what you need to be doing do this do that if your product is bad you should be able to step up and say you know what we need to improve our product that is innovation we need to make the experience better for customers so that's innovation and now optimization is you could be optimizing the efficiency uh, or you could be automating your business you could increase efficiency for your people or your systems that we could get deeper into uh, into a, a later stage of your business so here's peter drucker who is considered to be the biggest uh, business management business consultant in the whole world uh, the aim of marketing is to know and understand the customer so well that the product or service fits him and sells itself peter drucker is considered the modern uh, guru of business right so he's he, he is the person and what he's saying is the aim of marketing is to know and understand the customer so well the product or service fits him and sells itself and that's what we're going to do today okay so that's an intelligent action remember it's all coming together right so when you are able to find the high, that's that gives you the highest income because understanding that customer will give you the highest income and as you're getting into it i want you to i want you to do a simple analysis about who you are and how you are in your business a self analysis of your business okay so for that we are doing a business radar chart and we would use the same colors uh, that we are using consistently if you haven't noticed that for this entire program and these are the things that are important in your business as of right now and as we grow as we go advance we would add more details into it but for now customer avatar is important who is your customer do you have an irresistible offer do you have a lead generation process do you have like enough lead conversion as in are you converting them into sales are you creating raving fans in the process like are they like raving about your product are they talking about your product like the best thing like in, in a evening like they go to bar and they are like or go to the zoom meeting based on the situation right now and they talk about your product and they're like oh my gosh i did this thing and that is phenomenal like 
And then do you have a system of automation and scaling? And there are other things that you could do too. But today I'm, I'm mostly going to focus on customer avatar and lead, lead generation. But here's the thing, like here's an example, you know, somebody's really good at like, you know, understanding their customer. So in that case, that person's radar chart could, could like this, could look like this. Irresistible over offer, okay, somewhat good. Lead generation sucks. Lead conversion, they're really good at it. Raving fans, uh, not that much. Automation and scaling, nothing. This is what, uh, this is how the radar chart, chart for that business look like. So for that, we are doing a business radar chart and we would use the same colors uh, that we are using consistently. If you haven't noticed that for this entire program, and these are the things that are important in your business as of right now. And as we grow, as we go advance, we would add more details into it. But for now, customer avatar is important. Who is your customer? Do you have an irresistible offer? Do you have a lead generation process? Do you have like enough lead conversion? As in, are you converting them into sales? Are you creating raving fans in the process? Like, are they like raving about your product? Are they talking about your product like the best thing, like in, in an evening, like they go to bar and they're like, or go to the Zoom meeting based on the situation right now. And they talk about your product and they're like, oh my gosh, I did this thing. And that is phenomenal. Like, and then do you have a system of automation and scaling? And there are other things that you could do too. But today I'm, I'm mostly going to focus on customer avatar and lead, lead generation. But here is the thing, like here's an example, you know, somebody is really good at like, you know, understanding their customer. So in that case, that person's radar chart could, could like this, could look like this. Irresistible over offer, okay, somewhat good. Lead generation sucks. Lead conversion, they're really good at it. Raving fans, uh, not that much. Automation and scaling, nothing. This is what, uh, this is how the radar chart, chart for that business look like. So for now, I would like you to, uh, I would like you to go and create your, draw your business radar chart right now, uh, pause the video and, and create your radar chart right now. And for us, uh, go ahead and look into this. For example, where do you, where are you great at? Like, do you understand who your customer is? So draw that, draw the circle, and um, and uh, you don't need to color it for now. Uh, so I'm going to give you five minutes. In the five minutes, please go ahead and draw this chart. Okay. Why we behave the way we do? Because of the Pentagon model of the brain. And we covered that in detail multiple times, reviewed it, but I'm giving a different dimension into it. The gut is a feeler. The gut brain is a feeler. The heart brain is a lover, right? The, 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 the um, brain stem, you know, the lower brain is a reptile and the neocortex is a mammal, right? And the, and the prefrontal cortex or the front area of your brain is, is a thinker. And brain can be divided into like different, different aspects. Like there are so many more deeper divisions of the brain. So if you're an advanced student of brain, I understand these don't represent exactly the way you see the brain, but I'm trying to give you a gauge as to how these five things operate. So we, we saw this in like different levels, right? But the, re and the reality is we don't make decisions in marketing. Like we don't, people don't make decisions logically. We make, make decisions from our gut and justify it with logic. We don't make decisions logically. We make decisions from our gut and justify it with logic. And up until now, people in marketing, they used to say people take decisions irrationally. I don't want to use the word irrationally. I want to use the word people decide from their gut, right? That's where they make the decision from. And if you're talking to their conceptual brain through your marketing, if you're talking to their conceptual brain, your marketing, which is what most people are doing in, in marketing, you're not going to get anybody attracted in, to working with you, right? So why? Because the decisions are not taken there. The decisions are taken on the gutter level, on the heart level, and on the lower part of your brain level, right? So, so we, we discussed that.
okay so most businesses think they are selling a product or service the product or service is for the conceptual level of the brain the thinker brain so what is needed for a person who's looking for a drill a person went to let's say home depot home depot is a store here in the here in the us where you get basically a drill and so many other home stuff so tell me for that person what is he looking for can you put that in the chat what type of i mean what is he looking for basically put that in the chat person who's looking for a drill i mean who is quick way quick way to make a hole yeah that's beautiful quick way to make a hole so basically he's looking for a hole in simple terms right it, it, it's it's a simple terms it's a it's a hole what he needs is a hole and if you talk about your the power drill and the color and the the blue drill which has so many features they don't flipping care they just care about how could i make a hole just tell me about how to make a hole that's what people are looking for we need to get into that frame in order for us to get start attracting people right so for that one market only to the motivated look for people who are already motivated because if you need, if you need to motivate them if you need to convince them and if you need to explain to them hey this is it this is this is really useful and then motivate them inspire them it's too much work find people who are already motivated look for those who are already looking for you or a similar solution look for people who are already looking for you so who in your business or who who are the people who are looking for you already they are sitting at home they are like they have this problem they like i wish i had teams in my life i wish i had uh, you know um power tech in my life i i wish i had ina in my life i wish i had chris in my life to help me with this particular thing and look for those who see only very few options for example some people think that oh i could i could do 12 things for this and if they believe they have 12 options then you might not be one of their options right so look for people who have very few options now you might be thinking oh how do i find all these people today it's really possible especially with social media and online online marketing and online advertisement you could actually filter people on based on all these criteria there are so many ways to do that okay so but it all starts with discovering your client's needs so the client only care about their needs they don't care about your product and the fastest way to discover their need needs is to ask right so we are going to do a simple uh, exercise right now to define your customer avatar right so pay attention to their unmet needs and uh, in the next session Uh, once you deeply pay attention to their unmet admit needs you could actually create a customer avatar so let's get into the next session which is your customer avatar so what are the major needs of your customers i want you to start thinking about it and this is more than just theory just let's get into the actual doing if you feel free to write it down right what are the needs of your customers and if you already know their needs like what are some of the deeper needs what are their problems what problems are they trying to solve and we are going to do an implementation in a few minutes but before that start thinking about it what words do they use to describe their problem what are the words that they use to describe their problem what are their aspirations start thinking about it if you want to write it down you can write it down but start thinking about it what do they want what keeps them awake at night at 2 am they are staying up at 2 am and what keeps them awake what are they thinking about get into their head and get into their conversation the conversation that they are having with themselves and if you have a product instead of a uh, service so if that's a case like what is the problem that they are thinking about when they think about the particular challenge that they are facing that that you solve for them and what is common about all of these challenges all the challenges that they are facing what is common about all of them what what could what could be a word that could describe all of their challenges think about it 
Are they mostly male or female? What age group? What do they hate? What do they believe is true? What do they value most? What are the three words that will describe your client? And I know we are going it fast. So uh, as you're listening to this again, listen to this again on a video. And those who are listening on the video, pause the video and take this, like, look at the screen and write down each and every detail about your customer. Get deep into them. And if we haven't even gotten deep yet, now we are getting deep. The three prime avatar questions, which we are actually going to do it together right now. So the first question is, what are the top three things in their mind right now? Make it five. What are the top five things in their mind right now? What are the questions that they are looking to answer right now? Again, not, don't start writing yet, but unless you're writing already, that's fine because we are going to pause for a second and then do it together. What are the five things that they should be asking, but not knowledgeable enough to know those? And I could demonstrate this with you in detail uh, on one of the implementation calls. But what are the five questions, five things that they should be asking, but they are not knowledgeable enough to know those? They don't know what questions to ask. They should be asking this instead of that, but they don't know how to ask. The third one is, what are the seven solutions that you're going to provide through your service that I'm going to provide through my service or product and create a lot of value for them? What are the seven solutions that I'm going to, that are going to provide through my, that I'm going to provide through my service or product that adds a lot of value for them? These are the three questions. Okay. So we are going to do this implementation together. But here's how I did it. Like, you know, for me, I actually drew a picture. I mean, this is not my picture. My daughter drew this picture for me uh, seven years ago, eight years ago. I had designed the entire freaking personality of my avatar. And most of the people who I work with are women. So I, took, I, I named her Lindsay. So you actually named that person. <laughs> it's a nice picture. <laughs> yeah, my daughter was, I don't know or first grade or second grade or something when she drew this right so this is this is her thing name that person right create that person what does she do she's an entrepreneur her name is Lindsay she's optimistic she's a negative thinker she makes this much money and you know she believes this you know these are her characteristic and uh, these are the things that she wants to avoid that's her identity this is her shadow you could go any as deep as you want about this thing because this is really 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 important the more you know about your customer and get into her shoes get into his shoes the deeper you will be able to solve like easily you, you will be able to solve their problem and like peter drucker said you will be able to i took this picture today by the way yeah so you will be able to um, able to sell your whatever product that you have you know, like cake, like really, really icy, you know, cake with a lot of icing and like carrot cake with icing. Like it's that easy because once you understand their pain, then you just need to start talking and immediately they're like, oh, this person gets me. Okay, I want to work with this person. So this is 10 minute exercise. Create your customer avatar right now. Uh, with that, let's get into the final concept for today, um, which is niche, uh, niche positioning and marketing messaging, which is both part of one small piece of the puzzle. So, so what is positioning? Positioning is creating a new mental category in the customer's mind. So if you want to start a cola company, those are taken, like Coca-Cola has that, right? Or Pepsi or somebody else have that. Coke mostly have that market. You cannot create a new mental category on that. It's difficult. And one example would be like when you think about a rental car, put that in the chat. Like, what company shows up uh, in your mind when you think about a car rental company? Right? Put that in the chat. Like, what car rental company can you think about? Uh, and in the US, we have a lot of car, car rental companies, but those who are outside of the world, you would observe some of the major companies in the in the US. For other countries, you might have different companies, right? But Okay, so Avis Enterprise Hertz. 
but you basically think about those three or four, two more companies, and that's it, right? There are like thousands of rental car companies. But once you have like six companies positioned in a market, then budget for sure, Avis Enterprise heads budget, and like there could be like two more companies. And that's it. Once six companies position in a market, then there is no opening for another seventh company because the customer's mind is already occupied. Okay, rental car, oh, it's enterprise. Rental car, it's Avis. Rental car, it's Hertz. These are companies in the US and Canada. And if you are from a different part of the world, uh, then it, it, you know, understand the idea that once you have six companies in, in a market space, then people are not able to collect that in their mind. They just eliminate that. They just forget about it. That's why you need to create a different positioning strategy. So if you're competing, you already lost. Okay. So who was the first person search engine? Like, you know that, right? Like Google, right? All of a sudden you remember Google and nobody cares about any other search engine, right? Who created the first MP3 player? And we talked about it in another session, uh, but it, you know, let's consider it as Apple. Right, but in in people's mind, it's Apple, right? So the best thing to do is name your own category, create a category, and name your own category. So what does that mean? Every category is diverging at any moment. So we had computers long time ago, and then it turned into desktop, and then laptops. The laptop turned into then it became tablets, right? Then it became phones. Then we had standard phones, smartphones. The dumb, dumb phones and the smartphones. Every moment, market is emerging into a next level. So now it's going to emerge into another thing. Just like that, your market, the specific market that you're working on, your business on, your thought leadership on, the, your, your business is on, your industry is on, it's emerging into a different thing right now as we speak, especially on 2020 and beyond because of the major economic shift that is happening. So the question to you is, what is an unmet need in your market that could create a new mental category around? Rather than being a new cock, how can you be uh, something else? Dr. Pepper came with a slight difference and they were able to get into the cola market. Right? So how can you find an unmet need by your cust in your in your market for your customers and create a new mental category around it. So in other words, find a need within your need. Find a niche within your niche that you could work on. So create a new category that you are the owner of, if that's possible. If not, you know, if not position you as a person slightly different than the, the standard people who are in, in your industry. And we could work on this you know, on the implementation session. And once you are able to do that, then you are ready to attract customers. Your customer attraction strategy. So how do you attract customers? It's very easy. Once you know these things, it's very easy. You could do it through Facebook Live, Post, Facebook Group, LinkedIn, articles, ads, videos, combination or physical marketing, mailers or whatever you do. The marketing messaging can be structured in a very unique way. That's what we are going to talk about. If you know this protocol, the, this just five-step protocol, then people will pay attention to you and they will come visit you. So the first step is start with a question your customers will say yes to. And I'm going to go through each of them in a second. Share your most vulnerable story about the problem. Share your biggest success. Share your customers' biggest success. Call to action. And if you are selling a product, it could be slightly different. And I will work with you to figure out how to create your customer attraction protocol. So imagine if you are asking a question that your customer will always say yes to. So remember, we, we went through these details. Like they have a problem. They are waking up at 2 a.m. and they are not able to sleep. So do you feel like you're waking up at 2 a.m. every day or every night, every morning? They say yes, immediately they're paying attention. So start with a question that your customer will always say yes to. Second thing, once you do that immediately, anybody who's not paying attention, that means they are not your customers. You don't need them anyway in your Facebook Live, LinkedIn, or whatever you're doing, your paid advertisement or anything that you're doing. Then share your most vulnerable story about this problem. 
Now that you manage your shadows, now that you managed your business's shadows, now that you know your business's soul values and shadow values, now you're comfortable enough to be vulnerable where you could share your story, your brand story, your, your own story. And if it could be your own story, your customer story, or, or your brand story. You share the most vulnerable, weirdest thing in your, in your thing that you're really afraid of sharing immediately humans connect with each other through our weirdness. If you share something weird, deep about yourself, immediately other person is like, oh my gosh, I found another human, right? So share your most vulnerable story about it. This is really authentically, you could share it with truthfully. And then you tell them, hey, after going through this, then something happened and then you share your biggest success on that particular area. Again, now you are talking about the five problems that one of the problems that this customer had in that particular area, you're sharing your most vulnerable st story and then share your biggest success. And then you could share your customer's biggest success, like one of your customer's biggest success. And then you ask them, do you want to schedule a call with us? Uh, you go, go to our website, sign up here, or do something else, online or offline, whether it is printed ads or anything that you do, or online ads or whatever. I prefer online, uh, and I'm going to use online as a reference from now on, so this way uh, I could communicate faster. So if you do these five things, people are going to respond to you. I'm going to show that, I'm, I'm going to unpack this in detail, uh, you know, um, Incorporate, incorporate the customer avatar in each of this conversation. For example, uh, Chris, Ina, uh, James, you talk about the five problems that you wrote down for your customers, the blind spots that they have, the solutions that you have, you offer, incorporate and into the conversation. I can give an example. I, I didn't prepare for this. I could just come up with something for right now because I know my customers. Do you feel like, so I'm giving you an example live of how I, how I would do this uh, client attraction protocol for my own business, for this particular brand that we are doing right now, right? So do you feel like you're stuck in your business? You are not able to grow your revenue to the next level and you have no idea how to take it to the next level. Let me share, you my, share with you my story. At the age of 19, I started my first business. The reason I started my first business was because I, we were going through a major financial crisis uh, in our family. And because of that, I didn't see that the job was going to pay me enough to solve those problems. Not because I knew how to manage business. But here's the thing, guys. Within four and a half years, what I was able to accomplish was fail in two businesses and double my debt, double my family's debt in four and a half years. I felt terrible. I felt exhausted. I didn't want to wake up. I was struggling. I, there were days I couldn't sleep. I was like, you know, you know, sometimes, you know, asking God, like, why is this happening? Why am I not able to do this? Many like people who are less smart than me, uh, they are able to do this, but I'm not able to do this. Why is this happening to me? Why am I failing all the time? These are the questions that I was asking. What happened was when one moment I realized that, you know what? I'm not studying. I'm not learning how to run a business. I just started a business without knowing how to manage business. So one moment I started studying business. I studied marketing. I studied sales. I studied productivity. I studied how to manage people. I studied things. And then something major shifted in me. The major shift was I started seeing me as a business owner who is successful. So there was a shift in my, my own mindset. And then I was able to build multi-million dollar businesses globally in multiple countries, in multiple environments with, with people from 25 different countries. And then I helped grow many businesses to grow to seven figures and eight figures and some of them nine figures. And then I wrote a book on business. And that became an international bestseller. bestseller. And I started this online program, uh, this program called Accelerator that helped businesses to grow and scale to the next level so that businesses can, you know, all over the world can grow and create a larger impact. If you want to learn more about how I do this, uh, feel free to schedule a call with me or come, go to my website, rubalchani.com and sign up and get to know like how we help businesses to grow so that you could take your business to the next level. That's it. 
uh, I just made it up right now, but that's how you do it, right? So what I did is like, I started with a question. I shared my most vulnerable story about this particular topic. I don't need to share all my baggage and all my things about, about different things about the business. Then I shared my biggest success and share my customers biggest success and call to action. And I know some of you guys, um, I mean, I know you might be doing like Facebook lives and stuff like that. You format that in this particular order, people will be like, I don't know. I wanted to contact you. Selling is a different thing. We are not talking about selling yet, but if you do this, then, uh, then, uh, people are going to respond to you. So make all the marketing message for their gut brain. This is how you do it for their gut brain. Can we make it more advanced? Yes, but I wanted to give you a simple tool, tool that you could start using right now. Right. So uh, if you're listening to this uh, in a video, spend five minutes, create your customer avatar attraction message right now. For example, find the first problem for your customer. First problem from the five problems that you wrote down, find a question, find a question, that they would say yes to and then share your most vulnerable story and share your you know biggest achievement on that topic and then create a call to action right now In the next session we are going to talk about uh, how to authentically persuade the new ABC of persuasion and if you feel like you are not really good at persuading people I would recommend go ahead and read my chapter called new ABC of persuasion in my book uh, if you don't have my book, send an email to help at rubelchandi.com. I would, um, I, uh, my team would, would be happy to send, uh, send a copy of my book for free. Uh, go ahead and do that. Uh, that particular chapter of the book about persuasion so that you're prepared for that. If that is an area that is challenging you, right? So here's your assignment. Finish and refine your customer avatar. Create, finish your customer attraction strategy, which we discussed, and then start attracting people. Start attracting people, right? So in summary, what we discussed was marketing is a strategic empathy. People don't buy products. They buy results, benefits, and solutions. Niches are not a group of people. They are needs. Even if you don't, we are not proficient in certain things, self-help, innovation, marketing, and optimization, these are some areas that we need to be working on, working on ourselves, innovation, marketing, and optimization in business. And you did your radar chart and you know where your strength and weakness are. Share it with us and I'll, I'll be happy to go through this. We have two hours, up to two hours uh, on, uh, on uh, the next implementation call for, uh, for the live, uh, for my studio audience. Feel free to bring in your avatar and discuss it with me and, uh, and we'll be happy to look into that, right? And you created your customer avatar, um, you know, so I showed you my customer avatar and then um, you, you designed your customer attraction strategy and you, we talked about the niche positioning. Look into like, how could you be a niche within your niche? Within the problem that people are facing, can I go like one more level deeper, right? And finally, if you want to do your feminine power move, bring three experiences that you had, three amazing experiences that you had. And I know some of you are listening like midnight, 2 a.m. or wherever you are. Bring the three amazing experiences, drop that into your heart. All right, guys, I'll let you guys leave. Thank you. Thank you for playing all the way to the end.